Yes, uh, I'm Emmanuel Salim. I'm a postdoc at the University of Lausanne. And uh, I just want to say that this presentation is really uh, three... We were three to prepare these presentations. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my colleagues cannot come today um, due to unexpected uh, reasons. But uh, what we wanted to, to do today is um, to give you some um, reflection and its insights about um, what we did in our own research and um, how we collaborate with mountain communities, mountain uh, stakeholders, and um, how it works well or not. So this presentation is, um, is really to share you some reflections uh, that has based on our experience. And the idea, the idea is not to go into detail about uh, each project, but more to present you what kind of collaboration we did, which one worked well uh, or not, and why. And uh, to identify the barriers that um, uh, the barriers to properly conduct research in collaboration with communities or in more general transdisciplinary approach. So. Um, for now, this, the three projects uh, I will present uh, have a common point, um, that they aim to evaluate changes in practices uh, in mountain area, in mountain tourism, how um, mountain tourism, mountain recreational activities uh, are changing face to climate change. And uh, as I think you all know here, uh, climate change uh, inducing many impacts to which mountain societies, uh, due to their specific characteristics, are uh, vulnerable of. And the studies assessing the impact of climate change on recreational and tourism practices show that the latter could have uh, negative impacts for certain uh, territories, for example, regarding uh, more frequent heat waves, uh, cryosphere degradation, water access, uh, etc. So, uh, also, other studies um, acknowledge that climate change can have sometimes positive impact uh, or opportunity for mountain territories uh, and, for example, also for um, tourism activities. Uh, for example, regarding mountains as uh, its environment, regarding freshness, uh, for example. So there is ambivalent sometimes uh, on studies regarding climate change and tourism and mountain activities. Part of the studies um, already published collaborate with mountain societies in order to answer um, as possible issues um, mountain communities have as possible. But uh, it is, uh, however, quite clear that collaboration between communities and researchers are sometimes not easy, can sometimes lead to misunderstanding, uh, due sometimes to diverging interest, temporality, uh, etc. And so this, this contribution comes from a reflection of the three research projects we did, working on this issue in collaboration in with mountain societies. And it questioned about relationships between the academic world, mountain society, research, and especially their involvement uh, using um, the results uh, arising from them. So we questioned about how mountain society involved in research project and how it impacts our academic research. The objective is to analyze um, this through the three ongoing projects. The first one aims to better understand how nature sport practitioners perceive the impact of climate change on their own practice and whether it induces uh, changes. The second project uh, expects to understand how tourism practices around uh, major alpine glaciers are evolving in the face of glacier retreat due to climate change. And finally, the third project focuses on the evolution of mountain wind conditions faced to climate change and the adaptations of mountain guides in France, Austria, uh, Italy and Switzerland. In these three projects, uh, mountain societies play different roles, different levels uh, of involvement, and yet different manner of using and communicating the results. If some of them uh, lead to great collaborations, others can lead to conflictual situations. And so this communication is also um, aiming to think about uh, how to conduct research action and knowledge dissemination, fostering uh, good cooperation by identifying barriers to, to a proper research community um, collaborations. So I didn't mention it, but the first project is led by uh, Anne-Sophie uh, Crepeau. The second was, was uh, the project of my PhD thesis, and the, the third one was conducted by Jacques Mouret uh, at the Lab. 
So the first project is ongoing uh, and it questioned nature spot practitioners, their perception of climate change and uh, focuses really on summer practices in mid mountain ranges. So the regional natural parks of Bauge and Vercors are the study areas of this research and support uh, plainly this, uh, this initiative. Due to their altitude gradient, mid-mountain range are significantly affected by climate change. And the effects of climate change are especially noticeable in winter, with a reduction of snow cover, short shortening of winter seasons, and they are also considerable, um, there is also considerable impact during the rest uh, of the year regarding uh, heat waves and uh, problems regarding um, activities during the summer season. So in this project, the Vercor and Bosch Park are interested in the consequences of climate change in on their respective area. The involvement uh, in this research project is part of the research action project already developed. Uh, regarding adaptation to climate change, such as the example of the uh, Adamo project. So to go further, the Adamo project deals with the impact of climate change and adaptation in mountain areas in a partici participatory and multidisciplinary approach. It, could, it, it concludes with a final report in 2018. And this report highlights the lightning of the tourist intersaison a shortening of the winter season, which has undeniable economic consequences for the area. And it also appears that the adaptive cap challenges consist of reducing the destination dependence on snow tourism and strengthening the attractiveness of the area. Uh, for this project, this is achieved by uh, diversifying practices, uh, increasing the reactivity of tourism service providers and contributing to the attractiveness uh, of the park through the development of tourist activities particularly uh, regarding nature sports. Following the Adamon project, the Vercor Park set up a global strategy supported by the Op European Fund, and the strategy includes three action research projects currently awaiting political impetus to be, to be launched. So informal uh, interview with stakeholders uh, did by uh, Anne-Sophie um, with stakeholders from the Vercor and Bosch Parks clearly indicate their interest in acquiring data and in-depth knowledge on the adaptation processes of nature sports practitioners in this, uh, in this area. The exchange uh, Anne-Sophie had with them before and during an, her doctoral research um, allowed her to refine the research project and the research subject as closely as possible to the issues at stake in the field. But um, this project is part of an adaptation strategy to climate change that have been initiated by manager of natural area uh, where um, nature sports are overrepresented. Indeed, these activities raise questions among managers in terms of conflict of use and management of frequentation, uh, especially in sensitive sites. The results um, of survey uh, of unsupervised visitors did by Anne-Sophie will provide them with useful data that will facilitate dealing with issues such as spreading uh, of visitor flows, transfer to other activity sites, mobility issues, environmental preservations, uh, etc. And finally, the results of the survey of activity providers will feed into the area's climate change adaptation strategies which will necessarily include the adaptation of nature sports. Their close relationships and the work already by, undertaken by in consultation with nature sports educators are positive uh, for concerted and applied use of this data in an adaptation process. But, um, however, also the collaboration between um, park and stakeholders and researchers is virtuous. Um, and Sophie said that political breaks can be identified uh, indeed, by discussing with the technicians uh, when um, we can observe uh, that they work in the implementation of concrete action based on their collaboration with scientists. But uh, concrete implementation of such action within this structure depends on political uh, decisions which are not always in line with the reality on the field when it comes to long-term action. It uh, would seem that the general trend in pol local politics is oriented toward a short-term vision with fast and concrete action visible uh, that can be uh, yes, visible within the political, the political mandate. Uh, 
after the, the project by uh, Anne Sophie, the second project uh, we analyzed uh, was implemented during my PhD from uh, 2018 to uh, 2021. And it's aimed to understand um, how glacier tourism stakeholders and how tourism, uh, glacier tourism uh, tourist visitors are impacted by climate change and how um, stakeholders and tourists adapt to the changes uh, relating to glacier environment. Even if the project was built around six different sites in French, Swiss and Austrian Alps, uh, what I will explain now really focus on the Mont Blanc Massif and on the work uh, we did uh, around the, mainly around the Mer de Glace. So this project was also part of uh, another uh, European project that is uh, Adapt Mont Blanc, um, that uh, aims to understand adaptation to climate change in the, in the Mont Blanc area. And so because of the consequences of climate change, high mountain environment uh, is changing rapidly, leading to profound change in glacial landscapes, landscapes that is subject of concern for both tourism stakeholders and tourists. In this context, previous existing relation between the lab and the operator lead to discussing a research project aiming to better understand um, how tourist behavior are changing faced to the change of the, the glacial landscape. So at this point, with the discussion of the stakeholder, everything goes well and uh, we can saw that the stakeholders are really interested uh, in participating uh, in this research, because also because they raise a lot of concern about uh, what's happened in their own places. So the project aimed at uh, to better understand how climate change impact tourism activities in mountain regions, to study adaptation to climate change, and to provide stakeholders with information about how tourists perceive these changes. The discussions with operators show their interest. We did uh, meetings uh, before uh, the beginning of the project, and as a result, they proposed to help us financially and to contribute by offer free access without any restriction to all of their installation in order for us to properly conduct uh, surveys and uh, interview uh, on the field. So at this point, um, everything goes uh, quite well. It was at the beginning of my PhD and the project running smoothly. That allowed us to conduct the research and survey on site. Um, and after about one year, um, different surveys were conducted to understand tourist motivations, uh, landscape perception, satisfaction, and their potential um, future behavior. After the first phase of the research, the idea was to present the first result to be published in academic literature to the operator in order to construct uh, the next phase with them with the aim really to to construct future research uh, integrating their um, their issues, their, their, their questionment. And here also the operator is interested and greatly facilitates the work. Uh, it was difficult to find time to build future work together and uh, even to give uh, for them to give feedback on the um, the first result. They said they were very interested but could not find time and uh, they continue um, however, to, to grant access for future survey without restriction, but not take no, took not part in the reflection uh, of, the, uh, of the definition of the research question. So also, uh, we can imagine that private actors could have a desire to, to have a word to say in data produced. In our case, it doesn't uh, work like that. There is uh, just no uh, implication of the stakeholder. S but in the other way, they... Uh, they facilitate uh, our work. So this reveals, I think, the difficulty of conducting research uh, with field operators and more broadly uh, of setting up transdisciplinary approaches. Even when actors and stakeholders are very interesting, it is difficult to mobilize them for the time needed and their day-to-day -day business often take priority. So in short, the temporality of the researcher and that uh, of the operator, in this case, private operator, see seems to be um, desynchronized. So th in the third project, the observation was quite similar. Stakeholders, that are sometimes also founders of the research project, support the project uh, to meet their individual needs, but regularly disagree with certain scientific results and their dissemination can be the cause of conflictual situations.
So what I will say now is based on the Jacques Mouret works um, at uh, both uh, Editem and University of Lausanne. So one example is the case of um, the access to Mont Blanc summit in the winter 2021, um, where the disseminations of information produced by scientists were, went wrong and lead to a conflictual situation between uh, scientists uh, and stakeholders. To set up the context, several witnesses uh, report that there was a large crevasse and an area of sharp ice on the ridge leading to the summit of Mont Blanc, making access to the summit more difficult and also uh, clearly more dangerous. A few weeks later, uh, a student from the Editem lab, uh, who was also a mountain guide, took measurement in the field and distributed a report to professional mountainers with the aim to better understand what was happening on the ridge and to communicate the most precise information possible to help climbers to adapt. The aim uh, at this time was also to prepare for the upcoming summer season with approximately 20,000 people using the route each summer. And uh, the report was as factual as possible, uh, precisely, uh, to avoid any manipulation of the information by, uh, by communities. Unfortunately, all through um, the team of Jacques sent the report only to professional and political entities with whom they used to work with, the report was quickly leaked on social network and was published by the press. And this uh, pub early publication uh, led to situation of conflict between many actors in mountaineering. Those who actually consider the crevasse to be a problem that requires special management measure, for example, with uh, equipment, and also um, those who consider that the crevasse was not a problem, that other route could be used, and that equipment uh, was not necessary. So this conflict uh, is nowadays still ongoing, with the equipment installed uh, having been installed by a guide now facing uh, a court summons. And the author of the study were also taken to task directly by an actor who felt that the information provided was not accurate, and in this specific case, the actor had a direct uh, interest for this information to, to not be published. There is another example, conversely, where the relations works very well. Uh, the study in question was carried out with the support of many mountaineering stakeholders to identify uh, risk at the Goute Corridor, that is a mandatory passage for the normal route of the Mont Blanc summit. And the results uh, of the study were well received by the mountaineering community and were a support for the implementation of management measures um, in the future for the route. More broadly, all the work carried out on the question uh, of the effect of climate change on mountaineering has led uh, scientists to have good relations with stakeholders in the field and to numerous collaborations. Uh, for example, a study on snow bridge resistance was carried out jointly with the Guide National School, a, stu a study on the evolution of uh, the access to the, the Mer de Glace mountains at um, was did with the community of communes of the, of the Chamonix Valley. And another um, example, uh, Jacques Conduct, is a study on the adaptation of mountain guide to the effect of climate change that was um, plainly co-constructed with the National Syndicate of Mountain Guides to help them uh, consider and accompany their members in the face of the effect of climate change. In this uh, example, digital content were created and a report was broadcast as well as an oral presentation uh, at the Syndicate General Assembly. And no, nowadays this topic is one of their priority. All the scientific results are tossed to our sparring guild in France, Italy and Switzerland. And uh, in each of the examples presented, the results have been published in scientific journals and disseminated to the professional actor concerned and to the general public. So the lesson we can draw from all of this is the importance of the mode of dissemination. A controlled dissemination of acquired data seems indispensable, especially in today's world of where information can be very quickly and widely disseminated, and the author co completely lose control. But on the other hand, uh, the limit of not being able to disseminate all over the places, uh, the information is that we will necessarily wish fewer people if we were to do it again, uh, perhaps uh, we do don't do this study on the access to the Mont Blanc, or at least we set things much better uh, with stakeholders from the beginning.
So according to the study uh, I presented, uh, we can see different barriers that can appear. Um, limiting the good relation between stakeholders, uh, mountain community, and scientific research. The first one is the temporality uh, that can be different between uh, scientific, stakeholder, private operator, etc. That can lead to uh, difficulty to, to really um, create the, the, the research with, with them. The second barrier is sometimes uh, revealed by, um, by the first project, the, the political agendas of the stakeholders that could be uh, in a different uh, temporality than for uh, the researcher, um, the researcher uh, aims. The third problem, uh, mainly reported by Jack, is the problem of the dissemination of knowledge. And finally, uh, a bit relating to the third project, uh, the last barrier we observe is the diverging interest between different stakeholders different actors for the community that can lead to different perception of the problem, to different decisions to be made, and that can also reduce uh, the time, uh, the efficiency, and um, yes, yeah, the efficiency in defining uh, the research question. So I see I'm out of time, so I will stop here. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, 